The Asia Pacific Association of Educators Training Institute is a non-profit, non-stock institution organization. This was organized and instituted by Dr. Dr. Raquel Teacher, who is a recipient of various awards in international and in local awarded as best researched paper in international research conference, held at Tokyo, Japan, most outstanding master teacher in silver lifetime achievement award in journalism, on January 7, 2019. Our vision this institution dream to build a unified community who are all successful in their own chosen field. Through this, the students and all professionals who want to grow professionally and achieve more, will be given a chance to achieve their dream and develop themselves as a holistic individual. We dream of students and all professionals to do more, to grow more and to dream more who passionately love to collaborate and share their ideas to other professionals and others. We are institution who love to educate and train other professionals to improve themselves and others, and build a community who help each other grow professionally. Our mission this institution helps students and all professionals to achieve their dream and inspire other on how to elevate their skills and knowledge. Together stronger we educate students and professionals to attain the following, student empowerment, teachers empowerment, to be a holistic individual, to grow professionally. The APD is an institution lead by educator who aim to inspire others to do more, to learn more, and to collaborate with other educators. The institution aimed to link all educators to share their best practices to better serve the quality of education in the Philippines. Together Stronger, We Educate.
good day everyone we are happy to welcome all of you to the educators forum in accepting worldwide challenges towards global competitiveness offered by asia pacific association educators training institute So for some reminders, be on time, join the meeting five minutes before the conference. Time starts by clicking the, the link sent to you. Set your microphone into mute unless you are recognized to speak. If you want to speak, please type your name in the chat box of the platform used and wait to be called before you unmute your microphone and speak. Face the camera while talking and maintain respectful actions and speech during the duration of the conference. And last, evaluate the activity. It will be a requirement for your certificate. Again, so welcome to Educators Forum in Accepting Worldwide Challenges Towards global competitiveness. All over the world, we are dealing with the same issues due to COVID-19 pandemic. The global pandemic has presented a variety of challenges, including physically, emotionally, financially, and much more. The effects of which are only beginning to be felt. We are hopefully to get some feedbacks and ideas on how we are going to cope up in every challenges we face today. So, we have some fantastic panelists today. So, let me go through a quick introduction. Our first panelist will be Dr. Ravindra Pata. So, Dr. Ravindra Pata, and he will talk about the impact of COVID-19 on education in India, in India, problems in developing countries. So, Dr. Ravindra Pata is currently an associate professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering at Medicaps University in Dori, China. He earned his doctorate in mechanical engineering from Gyan Bihar University, India. Dr. Patak owns about 10 global patents and published 45 plus articles in the peer-reviewed international journals and over 20 conference proceedings and has delivered 25 plus lectures in the international and national conferences. He is a fellow of the Institutions of Engineers in India, International Engineering and Technology Institute in Hong Kong, Indian Nuclear Society, Assessment Team of Quality Certification in London, World Book of Record in London, South Asian Chamber of Conference and Industry. Okay, so our next panelist is Dr. Risanto E. Avila, the mentor of mentors in campus journalism. Dr. Crisanto E. Avila has been advocating on campus journalism excellence since 2006, when he established the Center of the Promotion of Campus Journalism. And after winning the most outstanding school paper advisor of the Philippines. He finished his bachelor's degree in education at Philippine Normal University in Manila in 1994 with a specialization in campus journalism. He obtained his Master of Arts in Educational Management from the Rizal University das Marinas and Covenant Global School in Oklahoma, USA. Dr. Avila took a doctorate degree in educational management at Manuel Oquezon University 
and Teresa Martirez City College. As an advocate on the explosion of campus journalism in the entire country, he has traveled around the Philippines, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao with his Biaheng Journalismo, bring campus journalism training to the farthest and remotest part of the country. He is being referred to us the mentor of mentors in campus journalism by the school paper advisors with his mentoring lectures and critiquing sessions. Dr. Avila won Catholic Mass Media Award for the best school organ in 2006 and has been a finalist in 2012 to 2014, Metrobank search for outstanding teachers. In 2013, he was lucky to represent the country in World Newspaper Congress in Thailand. In 2014 and 15, he received the Ngal Lambayan Award and Asia Pacific Award for Education and Humanitarianism. He won the Best Research Oral Presenter in the 2018 Universal Academic Cluster International Autumn Conference held in Tokyo, Japan with his doctoral dissertation titled Compliance with Campus Journalism Act of 1991 and the quality of the selected school papers in the City of Schools Division of Das Marinas, a survey. For benchmarking in newspapering and broadcasting, Dr. Ha Avila has also traveled in the Asia-Pacific region, such as Thailand, Korea, Japan, China, Hong Kong, Malaysia, Singapore, and the United States of America. He is now a perennial and resident judge lecturer of various divisions and regions in the country. Today, Dr. Avila will discuss about the challenges of education in time of COVID-19 pandemic. So another panelist will be Aurea G. Bonites, EDD, C. Ms. Bonites, graduated with a degree of Bachelor of Science in Industrial Education, major in Physics and minor in Mathematics in Marikina Institute of Science and Technology, Marikina City. She pursued her Master of Degree and graduated Master of Arts in Teaching Physics, also in Marikina Institute of Science and Technology. She is also continuing and about to finish her doctorate degree, Doctor of Education, major in Educational Management in Marikina Polytechnic College. She is a public secondary teacher for almost 96 years, a teacher researcher, author, and sim writer. Research speaker, also an outstanding secondary teacher and researcher in her own field. At present, Ms. Bonites is a resident speaker of Asia Pacific Association Educators Training Institute, where she is also a member affiliate and holding coordinatorships in schools like Brigada Escuela and grade level coordinator. Being a teacher of science and an individual who has that heartfelt and warm intimacy with the mother nature, she spearheaded the use of recyclable materials and gulayan at halamang gamot sa bakuran in their community, where she was awarded as the coordinator. Her advocacy, kalikasan, pagyamanin, at pangalagaan. She was then the president of the Homeowners Association and at present, an active officer and consultant of the community. Her principles in life, Aim high, dream high, but always keep your feet on the ground. Don't forget to always bring back all the glory to God. And now she will talk about the quality of education in the midst of crisis. Okay, so for our next panelist is Ms. Ruby Cres J. Gaida. Ms. Gaida is a special science teacher for of Philippine, Philippine Science High School, Central Visayas Campus. She is also the current unit head of the Social Science Unit of the institution. 
She has been with the institution since 2011 and has participated in various Philippine science high school system wide activities, projects, and programs as a writer, technical working group member, a contributor. She was written several lesson exemplars and modules for her classes and was commissioned by Philippine Science High School System to take part in writing the system's learning resource package for economics, along with other three colleagues. She also became one of the test questions writers for the system's readiness examination for two school years. She was also an award-winning coach in various economic squeeze contests, debates, policy paper making, and video making. Aside from economics education, she also highlights her interest and knowledge on pedagogical approaches and strategies outcomes based education, innovative and creative teaching materials preparation, educational game creation, module preparation and writing, and educational technology as she was taught as a resource person in different seminar workshops. She co-founded a neophyte professional organization, social, social Science Educators for Empowerment and Knowledge Building, with her colleagues from the Philippine Science High School System. She is also the National Secretary of the Council of Economics Educator since 2018. Ms. Gaida is also an active affiliate member of Asia Pacific Association of Educators Training Institute and currently one of the in-house national speakers of the organization. And her topic is all about challenges in adapting remote teaching. Okay, the next one is Dr. Maria Vandivica G. Banyares. She started with a humble beginning. She worked as Mongol pencil, Crayola and Panda Bolpen Promodizer at National Bookstore Santa Lucia East Grand Mall. While studying college, she became full scholar of UC government and received certificate of recognition for maintaining the required quota grades. She graduated with degrees of bachelor in business teacher education at Polytechnic University of the Philippines in Manila, Master of Arts in Teaching major in Technology and Home Economics at Technological University of the Philippines, Manila, Master in Business Administration at University of Makati, Doctor of Education major in Industrial Education Management at Technological University of the Philippines and currently pursuing her Doctor in Business Administration at Philippine School of Business Administration in QC. She earned test the NC3 in bookkeeping, pilot wellness and events management services. She became the guidance advocate, canteen manager, special education coordinator, and grade level coordinator. In current capacity, she is master teacher one and subject group head of accountancy business and management of San Mateo Senior High School. She is also a part-time faculty of St. Matthew College. She became a national demonstration teacher with or in the Asia Pacific Association of Educators Training Institute. She has been writing several researches, such as her math thesis, titled Entrepreneurial Attitudes and Attributes of Business High School Students at Pasig Catholic College Students, Basis for Intervention Program, her MBA Business Plan, entitled Able Special Education Center, Skill-Based Approach for Students with Special Needs, Doctor of Education, education dissertation entitled Best Practices in Canteen Service in Selected Public Schools in the Division of Rizal Depen. Input to the Development of Manual of Operation in Canteen Management. 
where she presented in Asia Pacific Association of Educators Training Institute or APAET National Research Conference held at De La Salle das Marinas Cavite. She is one of the pioneer members of Modern Day Samaritan who are helping people who are in need by giving school supplies and Nostra Buena package. During summer and Christmas breaks, as part of social responsibility, she brings with her several years of experience as high school teacher, college professor, school administrator, resource speaker, researcher, and Department of Education Central Office Writer or Validator for Financial Education. Dr. Banyares is one of the writers and validators of the policy learning exemplars. Monitoring tool of financial education integration in Department of Education Central Office. She is one of the writers for senior high school accountancy business and management session guides used in mass training for senior high school teachers headed by Department of Education Central Office. She is also one of the writers of senior high school work immersion manual headed by Department of Education Central Office. She participated in Department of Education Central Office consultative conference with the supervisors and the original crafters of K-12 curriculum held at BP Makiling Los Banos Laguna. She's one of the member affiliates and resource speaker of Asia Pacific Association of Educators Training Institute. In the International Seminar of Pedagogical Approach in Teaching All Learning Areas at University of the Philippines, Diliman, Quezon City. And last to be with us is Dr. Raquel D. Bernabe. Is the founder of Asia Pacific Association Educators Training Institute, or the APAT. Founder International Organization of Professional Teachers and Researchers, Global Motivational and Keynote Speaker, Most Outstanding Innovative Leader, Best Research Paper in an International Conference held in Tokyo, Japan on October 22, 2018. National Most Outstanding Master Teacher and Most Outstanding Research Advocate and Lifetime Achievement Award in Journalism, National Champion in Science Investigatory Project, author of book, Organizational Culture and Productivity of Elementary Teachers in the Philippines, Effectiveness of LRMDS, Portal in Performance of Teachers, and impact of deeper school page in the performance of students. So I know that we are all excited and interested with the topic they are going to discuss to us. Ayan, so maaari na po natin upisahan ang ating talakayan sa ating mga panelists. So sino po kaya ang mauuna na magbahagi sa inyo? Okay, so um, thank you very much from Edradine Labay, our moderator. So she is also the teacher from Batangas. Um, hello um, everyone, our dear participants. A pleasant evening to all of you. And welcome in Asia Pacific Association of Educators Training Institute. Once again, um, I am Dr. Maria Wenderica G. Banyares, and I'll be the one who will ask questions and um, to welcome you in our um, second forum here in APAETI. Okay, so thank you very much, Ma'am Labay, for our generous introductions. 
So, um, the first question that we're going to ask to our um to our panelists, of course, are what are the challenges that they experience, especially in education or global competitiveness during new normal? And of course, if there are challenges, and how they cope up or how they deal with these challenges? Yeah. So very easy question. And I know that we are in new normal and we are still adjusting and adapting this type of scenario in our lives, right? Okay, so um, let's hear from our panelists. I think we need to start with Dr. Avila, Dr. Crisanto uh, Avila, sir. Good evening, sir. I know that you are in driving and keep safe while you are driving, sir. And still, um, he is he is with us, even he because he has um views or busy schedule. Sir, um, you are you need to unmute, sir, your microphone. You are still mute. Okay, so maybe um, Sir Crisanto has problem in the connection. But as you can see in the in the video or in his camera that he is still driving. I think uh, we need to start with our second second um, panelist. Of course, from San Mateo Rizal, my kababayan. So let's hear from Ma'am Aurea Bonites from AO. Is Ma'am Bonites here? Yeah. So because of the typhoon and because of the talagang bad and bad weather, uh, we are experiencing technical glitches. Ayan. So nandito na po si Ma'am Bonites. Ma'am, um, what are the challenges that you experience in terms of... Hello. I am sir. Yes, sir, please. Yeah, can you see me right now? Yes, Bob. Hello. Okay, so uh, I will start discussing with you specifically for uh, the for the private school. So the title of my uh, of my uh, lecture right now is the challenges of private schools in the uh, during the pandemic time so uh, i'll be uh, my my sharing is more on uh, private school so um we know for a fact that uh, last march in the mid march 2020 uh, the department of education and the government drastically ordered for the closure of all schools in the country. That's why, as a result, he wasn't able to stage graduation and recognition rights for the school year 2019-2020. So um, since we don't have classes already, on the third week and fourth week of March, we private schools, we wasn't able to collect the payments for the last quarter and we wasn't able to have the clearancing system for both students and teachers. So uh, the problem last March 2020 of private school is actually more on collection. Until such time in summertime during the lockdown and pandemic, our school are closed. So um, the problem of the schools is more on the financial status or financially that we we we, are, we were able not to pay we wasn't able to pay the salary of teachers last march and during summertime also we wasn't able to pay the taxes the bills of schools last summer because as a private school we are only depending on the collection of uh, we're only depending our funds from the collection of the school. Now, what's another issue? Uh, since June, since June 2020, our students started to uh, exodus on public school for the reason of their parents lost lose their job because of pandemic. So their parents were. Uh, uh, this place when it comes to uh, um, employment, that's why they decided to transfer in a public school. But the problem is the public, 
they uh, they accepted the students even without credential that's why we wasn't have the chance to be collecting all the accounts collectibles from our parents so still that problem has something to do really with the financial status of private schools now what is the effect of that exodus our enrollment was uh, affected so um uh, 75 percent and 50 percent of our enrollees uh, of our enrollment was lost so um, uh, many private schools declared closure for this school year but those who wasn't able to but those who decided to still open uh, the the status is that we have actually lost 50 percent to 75 percent of our enrollment and what is the effect we did not rehire 50 percent of our teachers which means to say 50 percent of the private school teachers were displaced when it comes to employment now as of this time when it comes to operation, it's really a hard thing for private school because we cannot pay bills. We can pay the salaries of teachers, the taxes. And you know what happened to the salary of private school teachers? It decreased on 25%. So uh, that's why our uh, advice now to our teachers is we're actually having a three-day scheme, three-day scheme reporting, so that in the two-day time, they can have uh, extra job or extra work for them to have extra income. And um, what's the other, what's our problem of private school? So operationally, it's really a big loss. And um, our 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 uh, fear now is comes 2021. Our fear is that we are not so sure that we can still recover. We can still recover. It might it might take two years before we can finally recover and go back to the normal operations of the school. So. Um, uh, uh, another problem being. Um, being uh, that we are facing right now is on the uh, module and on online since we are uh, since we are all uh, using online um, we have or we are actually forced to be improving our um, ICT or IT infrastructure by adding computers by improving our internet so despite of the fact that we have to lower for us to invite more enrollees for this school year we really have to lower the fees for 25 percent despite of the fact that we need additional sources for the uh, for the infrastructure when it comes to it and for the modules so um the public the private school is really at loss we are telling you honestly that the pandemic is killing the private schools and even the other private institution. So, um, of course, as educators, as learning institution, we have to champion the education of our students for this school year. And uh, we have to be very cooperative to our government, to the community, and it's of course our mission to continue the education of our students despite of the pandemic. So we are still giving our, um, our uh, we are still uh, living with our mission and vision. And we, we, we cannot just, um, we cannot just give up the private school system. With that, thank you all for listening and good evening. Thank you. So thank you very much, sir. So my takeaway is continue our education despite of pandemic. So thank you, sir, Dr. Avila. Um, let's hear now from Dr. Pata. Hello, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening here in the Philippines. Hello, sir. Okay, so I think um 
Mr. Parker is not responding right now. Later, um, we can hear the idea or the topic from Dr. Parker. And let's proceed now from um, Ma'am Aurea Benitez. Hello, Ma'am. The presence of Dr. Lloyd Dr. Uh, one of the members of the team, she is also a master teacher at Pasadena. Hello, Dr. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Is it my turn? Uh, good evening. No. Okay, okay. Crisis and conflict negatively affect the education of the quality will there in the midst of crisis? Now, there are different major conflicts and crises like natural disaster and one of them is to education okay. 2030. Quality education must be delivered no matter what the circumstances are. Like for instance, we are doing online distance learning and modular distance learning as modalities in teaching. The question is, by doing such thing as our way of teaching, will there be quality education? Uh, we also receive several complaints from parents, both from online distance classes and modular distance classes. In modular distance learning, they really depend on module. So there is individual or dependent learning for students without the thorough discussions of teachers. So again, can we expect quality education for this scenario? Are we really sure that we can achieve quality education despite of the fact that we teachers can teach them hand on hand and face to face? There are also problems, advantages and disadvantages on online distance learning, uh, considering the use of technology and internet providers. We should take this into consideration on how effective will be the delivery of lessons to our students. And then the stress and pressure that we are experiencing that comes from the job of a teacher have become increasingly alarming. Gone are the days of just teaching content. Teachers now are expected to do more with less time and less financial support. If the teachers are stressed and pressured, how can they teach well or how can they teach effectively? This will lead for, uh, to ineffective teaching. Thus, we cannot expect quality education. So these are the challenges for us educators on how to deliver or we can deliver our quality teachings to our learners despite of the fact that we have these conflicts especially the COVID-19. How are we going to produce quality learners and thus aiming for quality education? That's all ma'am. So thank you very much, Ma'am Aria Benitez. So, um, talaga, um, I am also experiencing what you are experiencing right now in terms in um, education in New Normal. So thank you for your idea, Ma'am Benitez. How about you, um, Ma'am Ruby, from the Philippine Science High School, Central Visayas Campus, our Cebuana? Um, <laughs> hi, po. Thank you, po, the Wendy. So, um. 
Uh, good evening po sa lahat. So thank you po sa uh, pag-attend ng ating forum today. So sa, amin, sa akin naman po, uh, I'm going to share the challenges towards adapting the remote learning setup na meron po tayo ngayon. So in our case po, we are, adapt, uh, we are doing the online remote learning. So uh, we upload or we have chosen uh, one learning management system po, which is Moodle. And uh, with regards to the challenges uh, system po is... Um, there are, ano po, uh, of course, we have questions or we have challenges in the quality of instruction that the students are receiving from the online. I believe na nare-relate po din natin to with the modular na setup kasi when we give the hard copy. So there's a challenge with regards to the quality of instruction kasi uh, almost zero po talaga yung delivery natin, uh, yung, yung pag, uh, basically yung uh, yung way of uh, hindi po kasi katulad before na nandyan talaga tayo physically so the instruction uh, the quality of instruction is quite uh, maganda and then may interaction tayo with the students if may mga clarification sila agad-agad natin nasasagot but with the current setup we don't have that so uh, there's a delay of the clarifications of misconceptions or answers to the questions of our uh, students or pupils. So it's a very big challenge po sa ating mga guru ngayon, uh, mga guru, and then of course to the students as well or the pupils as well. Um, second, or oh, ano, uh, second, um, challenge we cannot uh, uh we cannot deny the fact that our students are our pupils as young as they are they are easily tempted or they are easily distracted with us with uh with games with movies etc so somehow the there is misuse of technology sa, sa current setup po natin so unlike before when we are having the face to face you use ng technology natin talaga is like for research lang uh, like basically 90% of our focus is spent on research or uh, we are using the technology of course in doing the presentation and the other so but then ngayon po since wala tayo uh, hindi tayo nandoon when we give our modules or when we upload lessons sa ating LMS um, at some point, um, uh, uh, there is a very big chance na they are they get distracted from uh, doing the tasks na kailangan nilang gawin. Um, tapos po, um, of course, um, uh, of, ang economic ano din ng ating mga students is a very big challenge and of course to the teachers so luckily po sa Philippine Science High School we have in specialists dito sa Central Visayas we have a very strong connection in re with regards to the internet we don't have problems with that but with our students there are really some students who cannot um, of course it's, uh, it consumes a very uh, large bandwidth or so it entails costs so uh, pag nagaklase kami uh, or nagakakadax or nagactive, uh, they are accomplishing the activity. They encountered a very uh, it entails a lot of cost. So let uh, isipin na din po natin yung mga students talaga na nandun sa kung makakafort sila. That the tender location has a very low connectivity. So basically, uh, uh, at this point in time. Um, during this pandemic, we faced these challenges. However, we also was able to um, address this by, of course, um, developing further our skills for those uh, who are not so into technology in the past. Uh, now, we, uh, we, we were exposed to several trainings on how to, of course, learn to adjust with this uh, setup and of course the training with how to properly conduct classes online and uh, without with regards to the students in their um, uh, connectivity issue uh, we remind them or the students uh, were reminded on how to become um, and also misuse of technology we rem uh, they are reminded all the time the, on how to become responsible digital 
citizens. So we always remind them of the more um, good uh, morals and, uh, and good ethics with regards to being a digital citizen, especially that we cannot guarantee, like when we are doing the class, they like screenshot or whatever, then they post it in the Facebook or like that. So things that are not, uh, that are not so um tawag ito uh, hindi masyado na pagbigyan toon before um are now being emphasized or being highlighted so uh, that's a one thing that this pandemic has given us uh as teacher and of course also to the students so um the pandemic has, uh, of course, exposed us or has made our eyes open that there are a lot of things that we really are, or we really didn't pa alam kung paano i address. So some, somehow it forced us to learn these things and, of course, improve ourselves as a teacher uh, in the, the overall process. Po. So that would be all, Doc Wendy. Thank you, po. So thank you very much, Mama Ruby Press J. Gaida from all the way from Cebu for sharing your thoughts. So let us acknowledge also the presence of our member affiliate, ayan po, Dr. Lloyda Tomilden, who can share later her recommendation or suggestion about the topic, as well as uh, we are uh, have now also Ma'am Eremi Aranas, the member affiliate, Sir De Guzman, um, who else? Ma'am Mariel Bedoncio, Master Teacher in Bulacan, and Ma'am Isel Simbaho. So, we, they are also here in our forum. And of course, last but not the least, um, we know, of course, and we want to know about the education in new normal in India. So, we are now our very own Dr. Pata. Hello, sir. Good evening. Is Dr. Patak here? I think it's, I, I saw him a while ago. Dr. Ravindra Patak, sir. Okay. So again, uh, hello, sir. He's here now. Sir, um, you are still in um, mute. Please unmute your microphone, sir. Sir, we still can't hear you. <laughs> I think uh, you are still in, uh, po, in mute. Please unmute your microphone, sir. Doc. Doc Patak. Okay. Hello, sir. Good evening. Yes. So now you see that. Like Philippines and India, the both is the same thing. The impact of pandemic COVID-19 is observed in every sector around the world. The education sectors of India, as well as world, are badly affected by this. It has enforced worldwide lockdown, creating very bad effect on the students' life. In India, around 32 crore learners stopped to move school colleges and all educational activities halted in India. The outbreak of COVID-19 has taught us that change is inevitable. It has worked as a catalyst for the educational institutions to grow and opt for platform with technologies which have not been used before. If I will discuss about the positions of government schools or public schools in India, so that is very difficult to find out the technological equipment. Now, around 70% of Indian population are in rural areas and sometimes even uh, they don't have to food. So how can they arrange the things for the online teaching? But all the things, all the data are coming from the only the rural, area, urban areas of the India. But we see that, uh, like we are also teachers, so we get some of initiatives are good in the time of pandemics. Like now, we are going to move towards a blended learning. Now, we are going to some classroom, like some online teaching. So that is blended learning now started in India. 
second thing is that the rise in use of learning management system before that we are using this learning management system but that not up to the mark but now we are using the learning management system third thing is that the enhance the use of soft copy of learning material before that uh, if i will tell my students also they need more copies and more hard materials but now we are going the soft copy of learning materials second thing is that now implementing collaborative work as now we are just conducting this program like that in our universities we are conducting lots of program in which we are inviting the foreign people to discuss everything and now in national level also we are working on the collaborative thing. second thing is that the rise in online meetings now everything is conducting on the online meetings so our whole work is depending on that next thing is that we are going in hand digital literacy now before that the teachers parents and students don't know about the online platform like google meet like zoom but now around 80% urban areas aware about that next thing is that that is the improve the use of electronic media for sharing information before that everything is going through the i mean notice boards everything is going to the uh, transfer to the person to person but now we are beginning on the electronic media for sharing information especially in case of teaching then another thing is that now we are exposed to the worldwide because now uh, our university now our colleges schools are just working collaboratively with the worldwide universities and now worldwide exposure is going on in the schools and colleges another thing is that now this online classes the every minute is counted so better time management is also coming and then now in india if you see the demand for open and distance learning is also started so these are the issue we got some benefited from the online teaching but again i am taking telling that this is only for the urban areas in rural areas things are very difficult some negative impact like that in india educational activity hampered now only the online classes is going on but you will see examination uh, not possible online because now the government is trying for online examinations but that is not possible and that is not successful second thing is that that is the impact on employment now my previous uh, speaker also told about this employment state if teachers parents everybody is affected by this due to the covid 19 and due to the unemployment and then before that when all things are started the online unprepared teachers and students for online education before that we were not very much engaged in the online education sometimes in the time of the conferences in the meetings we were used uh, the online but at the time of uh, the starting we are unprepared about the online examination and in public schools in ru uh, rural areas that was very difficult another thing is that reduced global employment opportunity as we know that our students are normally go for abroad for studies and the most of the mnc companies also coming from the employment but this year nothing is happening then now also the increased responsibility of parents to educate their kids i am also the parent we are also the parents so we know that uh, in your country also in india also this responsibility also increased another thing is that in india in schools we provide the meat day meals normally the lunch is provided by the government in rural areas for the students and now the schools are closed so most of the uh, just uh, students in the rural areas they are not getting even good food because from last 10 years the government is continuously supplying in all schools the food and now they are not getting the nutrition and another thing is that that is the payment of school college fee got delayed as our previous speaker told that that the problem of fee in private schools like in india also private schools colleges the parents are not ready to pay the fees and this is affecting the whole system of education and firstly the education system is affecting in other areas something something is happening but in educational uh, field 
that is very much different. So now I just conclude my all points. Now in India, if you will see, in uh, rural area, things are uh, changing. They are using the online material, they are using the laptops, they are using apps, internet is available, electricity is available. But that is around 30% of India. And if you see the 70% of India, which is living in the rural area, they are facing lots of problems. They have not given for food. So how they can purchase the uh, this laptops, how they can purchase the mobiles, and somewhere even electricity is not available. So for rural areas, this time is very difficult, and this year is vanished for all the students. So uh, we are trying for our level, uh, is how much uh, we can support the people. So thank you very much. Okay, so um, thank you very much, Dr. Patna, for sharing your thoughts. So truly, that is that this new normal is more on adjusting and adapting, right? Okay, so thank you very much, Dr. Patna. And um, we have now uh, we are done in the question and answer, and I think we we need now to proceed to our um. Uh, how are you going to move up in this new normal so you can give your own suggestion or recommendation so because we identified some uh, problems that we are encountering in new normal and of course there is impossibility in our life and how are we going to cope up with this so um, may i ask dr Lloyd to melden for your idea ma'am good evening ma'am Lloyd. Okay, good evening, po. Good evening, Doc, uh, Wendy, and to everyone and to all the participants. Actually, speaking of quality, uh, delivering quality education is not just the um, mere concerns of the teachers. It is a collaborative effort done by the Division of PASI as well as the city government of PASI. Actually, uh, we are very fortunate in the Division of PASI because our mayor, Vico, sort of provided. Uh, tablet for our students, even a uh, free uh, netbook and laptop for the teachers. Now for the inter for internet connections, they also provided every barangay through the help of the barangay chairman to provide free internet for students who are in those students who are not uh, lucky enough to have internet at home, they can go uh, to a place where they are definitely safe. And when it comes to uh, delivery, delivery of learning during our first week, uh, of course, there were problems arise. And what we did during the orientation, we really oriented our parents that if there will be poor internet connections uh, encountering by their children, they have to communicate with the advisors. So what we did as a school community, the uh, subject teachers also informed the advisors and then the advisors informed the parents through GC. And if the parents uh, will not respond to our communications, the advisor tried to call, to call up the parents and try to know what the situations of their children it, you know it's just a matter of heart especially at this time of pandemic teachers really uh expand their heart really understand the situations of the kind of students that we are catering because we are in a public sector so definitely we have to uh, understand that there will be problems like that so what we did for me, like me as an advisor also, what I did was when my students uh, did not attend in their classes, I called up the parents and I tried to call him and explain to him with my own expense. And also the other teachers are ready for that. Because, you know, at this time of pandemic, we really have to extend our resources. Because teaching is a noble profession. We are not just here in the profession because of our salary. We are there, as the saying goes, many are called, but few are chosen. Since we are the chosen one, we have to extend our all. Yeah, and then uh, this 
second week, this week is already the third week. Uh, many of our students already already adjusted. Uh, they are already familiar how to have the Google Classroom, and that is uh, it's already our setup. Constant communication for those students who are having the modular uh, modality. We see to it that they turn in all their their outputs in a proper boxes and then it's the uh, utility who help also assist the teachers to give the uh, outputs of the students so it is uh, i can say that this is smooth all the problems encountered like the video lessons and the uh, what do you call that the modules Actually, before it was uh, delivered to different schools, our Division of Passing hired an editor. So I can say that uh, delivering quality education is not just a problem of one uh, on the side of the teachers. It should be a collaborative effort of all, city government, the community, the teachers, parents, and the school heads. That's all, thank you. So thank you very much, Dr. Lorida. So truly, it's a collaborative effort, and it's like with the advent of the helping of starting from the stakeholders to our local government it is very important in New Normal, as well as also with the sharing of Dr. Kata in India. Okay, so let's hear from the, of course, our no other than the CEO or President of Asia Pacific of Association, uh, Educators Training Institute, Dr. Raquel D. Bernabe. Ma'am, do you have any um, suggestion or recommendation? Okay, so a pleasant evening to each and every one of you. Kamusta kayo lahat? So despite of uh, uh, napakalakas na ulan ngayon dito, natuloy pa rin ang ating Educators Forum. So I will just give you a brief a brief summary of what is really happening around the world uh, with regards to uh, educator education system. So, the COVID-19 pandemic has affected educational systems worldwide, leading to the near total closures of schools, universities, and colleges. So with that, nagkaroon tayo ng mga distance learning approach. And one of these uh, is the online modality. So as we all know, online learning shows the collaboration between parents and teachers in the children's development. Continuous learning between the entire or the center and at home also provides an opportunity for teachers to be more creative in exploring the latest skills and technologies in producing the learning materials such as video and other platforms. So I will just give you um, an overview on, on what uh, online teachers or uh, uh, teachers nowadays doing in the in their online modality. So as a teacher, we need to keep in mind the seven learning zones so that our student can adapt to our uh, uh, online mode. So of course. We have to uh, stay in touch with what we call the discovery zone. And what is discovery zone? This is the display of examples and provide essential focus, record observations, and use of the data. Another thing is we can use the new zone. Maraming platform na, pe na pwede natin gamitin uh, para... Uh, magamit pa rin natin itong seven learning zones na dapat lagi nating uh, ina-adapt. Okay, another thing is, of course, as a teacher, we need to also adapt the, su the supply zones. What is supply zones? It is a uh, loop, share reference materials, create a hub for student, work, and uh, what are the platforms that we can use to create a hub for our student? Uh, we can use Messenger, we can use other platform. And then, of course, you need to also observe the community zone. 
And how are we going to do that? Of course, we need to evaluate progress, clarify or correct misconceptions, take notes and plan ahead. And of course, when you do that, you can empower your students to do it for you. So, paano yun? You can use messengers uh, para makakunek ka sa mga students mo. Another thing is also you need to create a quiet zone. So, what is quiet zone? You need to define the zone with a spare table and chairs. Kailangan kapag nagtuturo ka, quiet. Walang maririnig na ingay ang iyong mga estudyante. Baka naman pati yung yung tahol ng aso, yung kala, uh, ng manok, and so on, ay naririnig at yung, yung, yung sayawan sa kapitbahay mo, naririnig. Of course, you need to observe also the quiet zone. Another thing is teacher zone. You need to define the professional space to work with learners and adult visitors. And the last one is the subject zone. You need to provide examples and resources for connecting subjects. You need to uh, use visual effect or you need to add visuals and provide context for vocabulary terms so that your student can adapt to your online modality. So, as we all know, the COVID-19 pandemic is causing more than 1.6 billion children and youth to be out of school in 161 countries. This is close to 80% of the world's enrolled students. Isn't it? So, how are we going to motivate our learners during remote learning due to COVID-19? I, uh, I will give you at least uh, some tips, at least five tips uh, as a teacher to motivate our learners during this pandemic time. Hello, Dr. Wendy, can you still hear me loud and clear? Yes, Doc. Dr. Wendy. Okay. Yes, doc. So the first tip that I can suggest to all teachers is, of course, you need to set clear goals with the participation of learners. And how can we do that? Of course, the first one is to assist learners to set goals. Then... You need to set objectives compatible with the learner's own goals. And you need to ensure that tasks are based on relatable and realistic scenarios. Yun talagang na-experience nila nowadays during pandemic time. And the second tip that I can suggest to all teachers is of course to define the main purpose of each lesson. Wag na po, uh, wag na tayong uh, mag-depend sa talagang uh, uh, nandoon sa mga theoretical concept ng ating mga lessons. We need to define the purpose of each lesson na maaka-adapt talaga ang mga students natin. And how can we do that? Of course, you need to clarify the purpose of each lesson and connect it with the learners' long-term learning goals. Another thing is to break down learning into meaningful segments so that uh, the interest of the students can be sustained. Another thing is uh, use diverse teaching strategies. Trial and error. You can use this platform today, but if you think your students uh do not participate well in the platform that you are using today, you can uh, change your platform. So, something like that. And then, another su suggestion or tips that I can uh, give to all teachers is, of course, to invite challenge and respond. So, how can we do that as a teacher? We need to avoid judgment and prepare construct comments and feedback to our students react closely to what learners may ask and provide them with a freestyle for their accomplishments. Huwag natin kakalimutan yon yung compliments. 
kapag may nang nagagawang maganda yung mga students mo while you are uh, teaching teaching them online wag tayo maging madamot sa pag, pagbibigay ng compliment sa ating mga estudyante kasi lahat ng nga ng tao ngayon kahit estudyante natin yan uh, kahit yung mga parents niya may pinagdadaanan so kapag sila ay masaya masaya din tayo yung mga teachers and of course we need to follow up with learners regularly and give them room for reactions, questions, and suggestions. Napakaraming platform na pwede nating magamit, katulad ng mga uh, platform na mga in-introduce namin sa Alpha ET trainings. Okay, so another tips that I can suggest for all teachers in this time of pandemic, uh, you need to encourage participation and collaboration and creativity among students events and of course among teachers so you need to encourage learners to engage and actively participate and encourage learners to share their own stories and experiences iba mas masayang pag-usapan kung experiential learning approach lagi ang ating gagamitin kasi talagang nakaka-adapt sila dahil talagang na-experience nila yon so encourage various forms of expressions and be open to ideas and proposed by learners. Maging open tayo, maging open-minded tayo every time uh, we do our lessons to our students. And the last one that I can suggest for all teachers is to customize learning. Lahat ng ginagawa natin ngayon is uh, customize lahat, isn't it? So how can we do that? You need to tailor lessons to the interest of learners. Hindi, hindi tayo uh, very short, mas mag, mas ma, mas maikse at mas madaling intindihin, mas maganda ang lessons at mas masaya. Okay? Then provide learners with tools to reduce dependence on the teacher. And of course, the last thing that we can uh, do out of uh, five tips, which is customization of learning, is engage learners in topics they are interested in. Huwag tayong magbigay ng mga sample lessons or mga sample uh, videos na sa talagay naman natin ay hindi magkakaroon ng interest ang ating mga students. Okay, so those are the tips that I can suggest when you are doing your online modality. So, Nowadays, um, there are lots of challenges the teachers or educators are facing, isn't it? Uh, in our recent news, marami ng mga nade-depress na uh, both uh, students and teachers. So I have uh, eight ways to keep yourself, eight ways or eight tips again or suggestions to keep yourself in a good physical and mental condition during the COVID-19 period. Okay, so kasi hindi lang lagi tayong uh, work from home, work from home, nakakalimutan na natin yung uh, uh, i-diversify yung, yung work from home at saka yung buhay natin sa buhay natin as, as a parent or as, as, as ourselves. So there are eight ways that I have uh, prepared here. Uh, for us to be able to cope up with this kind of system. Okay, so the first one is, of course, as a teacher, we need to stay connected to others. Regularly speak with work colleagues, your family, and friends. That's the reason why I kept on the, uh, calling my affiliate. Uh, when uh, when uh, I do programs, I always collect collate their ideas, and uh, when they have problems, I'm also here to help them and to give them uh, some suggestions and tips how to cope with those problems. So another tips is to, re uh, to reduce stress, structure your uh, days, take a regular breaks, and adapt your daily life to the current situation. So yun, lagi... Lagi naman dapat ganun ang uh, ating uh, perception sa buhay. We need to be flexible enough. Okay? So, 
Another thing is to prevent feelings of helplessness. And how can we do that? Plan your day as much as possible. Hindi yung, uh, ito ang lesson mo sa mga bata na, na ituturo mo. Uh, nag-depend ka na lang doon sa books. Nag-depend ka na lang doon sa lesson itself. Why don't you try to plan uh, ahead of time? Uh, mag-search ka ng mga magagandang mga videos na pwede mo uh, i-example sa mga students mo para mas lalo nilang maintindihan or uh, think of a good example based on your uh, own experience para mas, ma mas maka-adapt yung mga estudyante mo sa something like that. So, the four tips that I can give to all teachers is, of course, to separate your private and professional activities to ensure efficiency and to maintain a work-life balance. Kasi minsan, hindi na natin separate yung work from home sa personal life natin. Isn't it? And of course, the tips that I can give to fight this a pandemic time is to regularly practice physical exercise and relaxation to ensure your mental and physical well-being. Sometimes when I I have I I have a feeling na magkakaroon ako na anxiety because of too much workload and bombastic uh, um, workloads and so on and so forth. Anong ginagawa natin? Like exercise, we can do exercise, we can dance, we can sing. So, have time for yourself. And of course, you need to be selective and limit the time you spend watching the news to maintain your peace of mind. Kasi mas nakaka, uh, nakaka kuha pa tayo ng mga negative vibes minsan sa mga news na napapanood natin. And of course, to keep energized, you need to devote time to creative activities. And at the end of the day, you need to review what you have achieved. Isn't it? Lagi nating uh, parang magbumuni-muni tayo. Something like that. Kung ano pa yung mga pangarap natin, kung ano yung pangarap natin para sa ibang tao, sa mga anak natin, sa estudyante natin, sa co-teachers natin, something like that. Uh, to avoid negative thoughts. Isn't it? So, the last thing that I can suggest to fight this uh, pandemic time to all educators is of course, you need to eat at regular times. Choose a life, balanced and varied diet to maintain energy levels and boost your immune system. So those are the things that uh, we can do to fight this pandemic uh, time or pandemic period in our life. So uh, I hope that all, uh, all uh, tips and suggestions that I have given you uh, will really help you uh, to fight this uh, pandemic period in our life. Okay, thank you very much, Doc Wendy. Okay, well, so, um, thank you very much, Dr. Ra uh, Rafael D. Bernabe, the CEO and the President of APAETI. So, thank you for giving the, your your tips and also your thoughts about how to cope up these challenges in new normal. So, thank you very much, ma'am. So, um, I think um, we have learned a lot of things today from our dear member affiliates from the from the school leaders here in our country or in the in india yeah, so but still we have limited time so uh, may i call in now um ma'am edrelin labay to formally close our forum okay so thank you dr Wendy. Thank you very much, everyone. I hope everybody's feeling good for well, your mental health matters. Excellent comments, tips, suggestions, and information from the panelists and participants.
So please do like, share, and subscribe Tapa Iti YouTube channel and Facebook page. Again, thank you so much for being with us today. God bless us all. So thank you, Ma'am Edradine Labay. So, nakamute ka na kayo. So, um, thank you um, to our member affiliates, Dr. Lauda Tomelden, for giving me share your thoughts or share your thoughts. Ma'am Bonites, Ma'am Gaida, Dr. Patak, all the way from India, um, Dr. Raquel B. Bernabe, and also Dr. Chris Abila, and of course, to all our dear participants. So thank you very much, and we are still... Um, inviting you to join us our our events or trainings and webinars here and in here in Apaeti. So please update yourself in by following our FB page. So you can see or you can watch this forum in our YouTube channel. So thank you very much and have a happy dinner with your family. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting us. Thank you thank so you much. For for and and thank you. For you. Yes, thank you to all of you. Thank you for participating. We will uh, stream this uh, forum to our YouTube channel so that uh, all educators can uh, watch this forum. Congratulations to all participants who have touched us live.